Hi, Dell Channel 21 here. Uh, oh, for the last while, I've been busy overclocking the EVGA Classified SR2 platform. And in this video, I want to share my findings and the general, sort of the process in general. Uh, well, I've got my notes here and everything with all the results. But if you didn't catch my previous video, the setup is as following. We've got a Classified SR2. We've got two Xeon X5675s, so that are not the most high-end Xeons for uh, this platform. Those would be the 5680 and the 5690. But the advantage this one has is it is a 95 watt uh, TDP instead of, I think the other ones are 130 watt. We've also got some RAM, in this case 24 gigabyte of DDR3-2400, although we will not be running it um, at such speeds uh, on this platform. And finally, two Seitenmuchen coolers. Those are large, beefy air coolers, which should be good enough for the uh, for overclocking here. Well, I'll start with the things I would like. I wanted to find out, which I found interesting. Uh, firstly, is many consider this a very difficult platform to overclock. It is a complicated platform. We can't be um, we have no unlocked multiplier, so we have to overclock by a, via the base clock. Um, but what I wanted to find out, if we just use uh, the base clock overlock, we don't touch anything else, we leave everything at auto, what kind of frequency we would be able to achieve. Next one is at a, um, a safe everyday voltage, so we can increase the voltage, but what would be a safe, a safe level. And finally, the maximum overclock. So I'm running in this case, I'm benchmarking with Cinebench R15, and I really wanted to find out what is the absolute maximum overclock I can get, regardless of whether this is not a 24 seven stable, but just, just stable enough so we can finish the benchmark. Well, the way, as I just said, this platform overclocks is we don't have a unlock multiplier. That was the main difference when uh, comparing this to Skulltrio, which got dual CPUs with unlock multiplier, which was really unique. But in this case, we are just going to be have to, basically like any x58 platform, um, if you're not running uh, Intel Extreme CPUs, you would be overclocking via the base clock. And this is the same process uh, in general. Um, and of course, we are, like Skilltrial, dealing with two CPUs, so we have a little bit of more possible variability when one CPU may overclock better or could run at lower voltage. So that is also an extra factor. What is worth noting, of course, is that is the classified SR2 has an old style BIOS, just like any other X58. And there was an application actually, which allowed you, it's called the Elite, to overclock um, a utility in Windows, just like you would find nowadays with the Intel Extreme tuning utility. However, I've just not been able to get that to work on the, under my Windows installation. So I just stuck with the old BIOS. So first, the maximum overclock at just stock settings, everything at automatic, just by increasing the base clock, where would it go? So at stock it runs at 3.33 GHz, 133 MHz base clock. And I've actually been able to raise it up to 172 MHz base clock, which gave an effective 3.96 GHz on all cores. So a 600 MHz overclock, which is pretty sweet. What is interesting is that at stock the CPUs run at 1.0, 1.1 volt, and the board automatically raised the voltage up to 1.3 volt. So not quite at the limit where Intel puts them, as I think 1.35 volt, but still interesting to see that it did raise the voltage a little bit. In Cinebench R15 this resulted in 1740 points on the multi-threaded and 100 single, 120 points for the single thread which is a nice 17% boost over stock, and is now beginning to close in on the Ryzen 7 2700X. Next up is the daily overclock, sort of the 24-7 safe voltage you would typically uh, run on these chips. And I chose that to be 1.4 volt on the V-Core. And as with the, uh, the previous overclock, I just kept raising the um, the base clock and see where it would uh, become unstable. 
And in this case, I've been able to get it up to 183 MHz base clock, which resulted in 4.2 GHz. So 900 MHz overstock now. And memory at 1830 MHz. I did play around with all the other settings. There are settings for the VDT and for the IO hub, which are voltages which you can also uh, increase. And there's also the infamous signal tweaks, which nobody really knows what they exactly do, but I didn't find them to have any impact. And just um, core voltage alone was seemed to do the trick. At 4.2 gigahertz, we now saw 1903 points multi-threaded and around 127, 128 points on the, thing, on the single thread, which is a 27% increase over stock and is now surpassing the Ryzen 7 2700X with the i9 9900K at stock now in sight. And lastly, which I think most of you would be most interested in, is the absolute max overclock I've been able to get. So on air I took around 1.5 volts really as the upper limit I could push these chips and I personally had in mind to, I really wanted to break 2000 points in Cinebench R15 and I'm glad to report that that was able to, to be done. So just a matter of kept increasing the voltages and I did test around with of course the other voltages but I didn't really find any of them to have much of a impact on the stability of the system. I did however get, um, set the memory speed uh, a tad lower and I eventually settled on a bus speed of 197 megahertz which resulted in 4.53 gigahertz on all 12 cores with 1.475 voltage on the chips which is impressive 4.5 gigahertz that is well, 1.2 gigahertz higher than stock. And in Cinebench R15 that resulted in 2,043 points on the multi-threaded and 139 points on the single thread, which is actually pretty good, and I'll get into a bit, which is 37% faster than over stock. And as you can see here, just about equal now with the i9-9900K, which I think is really quite cool. I would like to add, I did also test at 4.6 gigahertz with the voltage maxed out at 1.5 volt and while I did manage to get it to boot in the windows it just wasn't stable enough for benchmarking. Also I did mention power I did test power draw which was now around 560 watts. So um, just over I believe 250 watts extra over stock which is really quite some power. And single thread at stock it was 101 points on the single thread with at 4.5 gigahertz now 139. So we went from around AMD FX levels now to around between Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. And with a the daily overclock you would get around the levels of a lower clock Sandy Bridge chip. So still pretty nice. So overall um actually um this was really fun to do. I did took a lot of time and tweaking, especially with the older BIOS and this BIOS isn't exactly the fastest to load. But I've had a great time and I think the performance really shows over 2000 points in Cinebench R15 is really quite impressive. And the amount of heat it also outputted was impressive, it really did warm up the room. I'm glad I also have a beefy power supply to back it up. So in any case, that was all the figures I had for you tonight. I Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, please leave them below or reach me on Twitter at channel 21 If you want to be kept up to date on future projects, why not consider subscribing? And well, that was all for now. Thanks for watching and bye bye.